about a few things. One thing that happens with a lot of different conditions, but is always going to be there with a concussion, is shock. I mean, just the fact that something has happened major to this body system. And as human beings, we're actually designed to operate within a pretty narrow region here. I mean, we have a body temperature that doesn't go too far away from 98.6. And as far as your blood circulation, hormonal activity, everything that goes on in your body operates in a pretty narrow window. And if something happens that is going to push you too far out of that window of opportunity or window of operation, then your body's going to shut down to try to stop that from happening. And that's really what shock is. So if something happens that is more than what you can handle, and that can be emotionally, physio physiologically, anatomically, your body will shut down. I mean, I'm sure you've all had the experience of like, I cannot take one more thing, okay? Don't, don't tell me about it. Tomorrow, I'll deal with it. And likewise with a concussion. When you get that kind of a force coming in, your body says, we can't do anything else. Looks like there's bleeding. There's a lot happening here. We need to just shut down. So there's always going to be an element of shock. And if you've seen somebody or if you yourself have had a concussion, you know that sense, and that's part of that floaty, kind of brain foggy, not quite on the ground feeling, like, and like it's hard to think, or it's hard to feel like you're present. And that's one of the things that we work with. A certain amount of shock is necessary to protect you while you're healing, but in order to heal, likewise, you need to be able to get out of that shock state to normalize, again, your circulation, your drainage for healing. So that's one of the things that we work with as soon as we see somebody, is just helping their adrenal glands and back and say, can we support you a little bit? Maybe by supplements, maybe by treatment techniques, but can we let the adrenal glands and your adrenaline, your cortisol, stabilize a little bit to move you a little closer into the healing piece? We also work with people's breathing, the diaphragm, we know about our diaphragm here, but we also have sheets of tissue that are diaphragms at the pelvic floor, at the thorax, and at the base of the head, some of those tissues that we saw wrapped around inside the skull. When you get a trauma, just like you hold your breath, and sometimes afterwards people will say, I can't even really take a deep breath. It hurts to breathe too much. And there's that holding pattern. But very gently helping to open up those diaphragms get that tissue moving again, gets you breathing. And as you breathe, you better again circulate the blood, drain the toxicity of the lymph, and get the body again back into a more healing kind of pattern. And then we look at, like Carol was saying, some of the physical alignment. We take a look at the sacrum. Did they have a blow to the head? Was there a downward force through the spine? Did that sacrum get wedged between the two ilia, or your two hip bones of your pelvis here? Not really hip, pelvis. Did that get wedged down? Sometimes when that happens, the person is thinking about their head and what happened when they got hit up here. But these little nerve roots that are covered by that same dura that went all the way around the brain and spinal cord, those same nerve roots coming out here can get irritated, wedged in. So oftentimes people will say, you know, I've got a concussion, but it's like I've got numbness in my feet. Or again, I don't feel connected to the ground. And that can be because these nerve roots are getting irritated by that descended force, descended sacrum that's stuck down. So we can work with the pelvis to help open up very gently these joints, get some gentle motion again, and help the sacrum and the spine to be back in better alignment. And then we can do some soft tissue, gentle release around the cranial base where we saw, and you can see here, these major vessels are coming through. And all of this work is done very, very gently. The last thing you want to do is irritate a system that's already on overload. So it's all done by just basically making an offering, is what we call it. But it's by gentle soft tissue release we use what we call indirect techniques. And you've probably heard, <coughs> some of you've heard this before, but there's a couple ways to approach something if you want it to happen, if you have something you want to achieve, like opening a drawer. If I want to open that drawer, I can use a direct approach. 
and put my foot up on the dresser, I can grab the drawer and pull on it. That's pretty direct. I'm not going to want to do that with somebody who's just had a concussion or really any kind of trauma. Another option is the indirect approach. I can take that drawer, shut it. Now what I really want is for it to open, but if I shut it, yeah, just kind of hold it a little bit, wiggle it around a little, and then try to open it. And I'm sure you've all had that experience where something was jammed, you shut the drawer, it settles mm -hmm. down, and then you can open it. So what we do is do that kind of an approach with a soft tissue, an indirect approach, supporting something instead of stretching it. And we do that, again, to try to open up the drainage, the circulation, and to get the person to begin having active movement again instead of operating in spasms. And all these things are done within the tolerance of the system, but it's important to know that there are things you can be done that can be done. We tend to think of this rest period as a hands-off, and it is important to allow the body to have time, but there are things we can do to help move that along. The problem is, if it's just rest, then sometimes the person is left in a state they can't get out of by themselves. There's too much spasm, there's too much holding, there's too much shock, and they can't move into a true healing <coughs> kind of phase. They need some help and support to get there. And those are the kinds of things that we do to try to help shift that timeline. And that can be, I mean, we've had people that have just had concussions. We've also seen people that are five or ten years later. Or have you ever met somebody and I'm sure the first thing they say to you was not, hi, I've had a concussion. But you meet them and you're like, that guy's not all there. It's like I'm talking to him, but it's like, and some, and you mentioned, is, is that a 14-year-old? Or is that, yeah, it's like, look at me. You know, what am I saying to you? And it's like, they're just not, you know, the wave is not going around the whole stadium there. It's like they're one of those guys that have one person here and one person here. And it may be years ago that they had some kind of trauma, but they can be stuck in that. And rest is important, but sometimes you need more than that. You need to, to support this return of the drainage and the circulation and the gentle coming back to a more normal pattern. Mm -hmm.